All right, folks, uh, welcome back to uh, Roland Martin Unfiltered uh, right here on the Black Star Network. So um, there are a number of people, obviously, who are now operating these days on social media who gain significant prominence as a result of their social media following. One of those folks is Darius Cook Williams. He is uh, a chef. He sells products, has gotten a significant following. Uh, on Instagram, Twitter, as well as Facebook. People are buying his products. Uh, they are attending uh, various dinner parties that he presents uh, all across the country as well. But many people also accuse the Atlanta cook of doxing people who disagree with him. Some have called him a scammer, a cyber bully, uh, for doxing people who disagree with him or who make a complaint. Now, you might remember uh, that a local reporter in Atlanta did an extensive story on him uh, with regards uh, to uh, the complaints that have been made against him. That's been, that's been going on. Uh, again, that was Atlanta Fox 5 reporter Randy Travis. And he actually confronted Darius about the allegations against him. This was some of his report from a couple of weeks ago. So why are you putting the names of your critics and their personal information online? You don't see that? Yeah, I've seen, I've seen the actual clips. Let me talk to you. Let me call my lawyer. Yes, please call someone. Help us understand why you're doing this on your social media pages to people who complain about you. We got her kids on there as well, kids' information. I put it on my Instagram. And it has been a living nightmare. A self-taught cook, Darius Williams has built an impressive online presence. Not just through his website, Darius Cooks TV, where he sells cookbooks and cookware mixed in with his cooking videos, but also on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, where he claims 1.5 million followers. He also sells seats for seven course meals called Dining with Darius, like the one we visited, held in various cities across the country. Williams often goes live multiple times a day to talk about food and sometimes brag about background checks followers send him about his critics. I can tell you who got the, um, the speeding ticket. I can tell you who moved from what state to what state. Now, um, yesterday in an Atlanta court, there was supposed to be a hearing uh, where Darius Cooks Williams was going to was supposed to get a restraining order against my next guest. He said that he had gotten a TRO, a temporary restraining order against her. And so they went to court yesterday. She showed up. She says he didn't. Melanie Ford, uh, she flew in from Atlanta uh, to share her story and all of the drama that she has been embroiled in and how this has impacted her uh, and her family uh, since all of this began. Glad to have you here on Roller Martin Unfiltered. So um, yesterday's court hearing. Yes. Again, was supposed to be uh, a hearing to make permanent this restraining order against you. So what was the, the accusation that Darius Cooks made against you? Um, he made a false allegation that I have been stalking him. Um, and yesterday was his opportunity to go and present those facts to go from a temporary protective order to a permanent protective order. Um, pretty much anyone can go into a courtroom state facts, and if you're convincing enough, uh, the judge will give you a temporary restraining order, but a court date is then set. You have to appear in court and then prove those allegations. Now, again, he was pursuing the TRO against you. That's correct. He filed it. Correct. So he, you would think that he would show up in court to make it permanent. What happened yesterday? One would think. Um, he chose not to show up. In fact, uh, my attorney uh, for this particular uh, matter, Will Davis, uh, was able to pull him up online. And when he was supposed to be on court, he, in court, he chose to be online cooking and fighting with another um, well-known uh, social media personality, um, Andrew Caldwell, uh, about um, the alleged um, statements for him frauding. People. Did, so. Now, did his attorney show up? No. So you go to court. Yes. N no one's, and again, this is a temporary restraining order that he saw against you. Correct. And he doesn't show up. Correct. And no one from his side shows up. Correct. 
and your attorney, while you're in court, yes. pulls up and he's he was live online on Instagram or something else at the very time he was supposed to be in court? That is correct. Okay, so 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 where did this all this begin in terms of um, uh, how did y'all meet? What like where, where did this begin? Um, Darius is an online personality, and I, I bought a cookbook from him. Um, you know, one of the things I oh, several things I could say, but I will give him credit. He back in 2016 didn't have the following that he has now. He's quite engaging. He is, uh, you know. At the time, there was a platform called Periscope. Mm -hmm. and you, Owned by Twitter. So basically, live streaming platform. Correct. Um, you put in your likes, and these personalities and pages start to feed. Um, if I put in cooking, then you'll start to see a bunch of things related to cooking. That is one of the things that I noted, and he showed up. Um, very engaging, seemed to be funny, seemed like no harm. Um, I purchased a cookbook from Darius. Um, just talking from overline, we kind of became connected, just like, oh, thank you for your support, so on and so forth. And um, eventually it led to a situation where he did reach out and he said, you know, hey, you know, as a way that I try to engage my audience, I tend to uh, find out who my demographic is. I hope you don't mind me reaching out. And um, I, I Googled you and I see you kind of got it going on. And um, I, I'd like to know a little bit more about you. Prior to that, um, unbeknownst to me, uh, Darius and I had a, a, a person in common. Um, and I saw what the brother was trying to do. And let me just say this, Roland. My husband and I do philanthropic things all the time. Um, it was at a time we started to see a lot of our, our, our young men being killed. Um, and we said, you know what, let's try to do something for some people out there doing some good things. Let's, let's help some entrepreneurs. Um, and so Darius is kind of one of those people that fed into that thing. And so when he reached out to me, I also extended myself. I saw that he was doing these dinner parties. He was calling them seven courses. Um, but the homes that he was holding them in, they weren't uh, what you would consider uh, to be something that you really would want to entertain. There was a lot of area for improvement. And I'm not an expert, but I think if you're going to be here, let's try to help one another as much as possible. So we become connected. Um, over time, I uh, only attended one event. but. He did ask me, and once I saw that he had uh, a platform, I suggested, why don't you try to do things that are, are good? He asked me to speak into his life, and I said yes. And, and it was, we were coming up on the 2016 election. I said, you have this platform, and people truly did seem engaged. I suggested that he encourage his fan base to vote. Um, uh, why don't you encourage them to get registered? Why don't you do things like a community garden? And so it was speaking into his life. And one of the things I actually mentioned to him was, you know, why don't you uh, consider starting a book club? Um, he stated that he didn't read like that. And I said, OK. So the two of you had a very friendly relationship. It was it was a friendly associate. Like right. I've never been to his home. He's never been to right. mine. But yeah, you try to talk. And were y'all corresponding? Were y'all talking? Were y'all emailing? Were you uh, texting? DMing, DMing, and Got then it. it did get to a point where we did have phone numbers for one another, and we did converse from Got time it. to time, but very rarely. Um, and so he was going to do this 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 book club, and uh, he asked me, and I gladly accepted. And I said, of course, I'll head that up for you because I I, I do read and I like to read. Um, but that was supposed to happen like on a Sunday, and I want to say that Thursday before. Uh, Darius goes online quite a lot. Uh, he got online, and it was just horrible the way that he spoke to uh, one of his followers. Now, what's really interesting about that is he gone online, and the conversation was about him. Um, he had gone to some company and had his credit fixed, and he was talking about that. And that's pivotal because he later then started a company which uh, the state of Georgia shut down and levied a $145,000 fee for illegal uh, activity. Um, but this woman kept asking for the name of this company, and he refused to give it to her. And then finally he went off and it was just really, really uh, nasty and just horrible. Um, I reached out to him, again, because he'd given me the permission to, and he called me Auntie Mel. 
Um, and I said, you know, you, you shouldn't talk to your supporters like that. You shouldn't <coughs> talk to anyone like that. Um, and, you know, I think I'm going to take a step back. Um, and in truth, I started to see little things, and I just wasn't feeling comfortable with, you know, pursuing. You know, you put your seeds in good ground. And I just didn't think that that was the situation um, that I needed to find myself in. So I backed off, um, and he immediately went to the group. Um, and at that time, well, when <coughs> online, I was known by my business name, my moniker, um, Agate Adorned. Um, I, he called me Auntie Mel because obviously- Say it again. He, Agate. Agate Adorned. Got Adorned. it. Mm -hmm. Got it. He knew my name, obviously, because he'd mailed me a cookbook, and we'd started to converse back and forth just very lightly. Uh, but when this happened and I spoke to him, uh, he went on to the book club page and then gave my full name instead of what people normally knew me as, you know, um, Auntie Mel or Agatha Dorn. Um, he made a statement that said, um, you know, well, Melanie Ford will no longer be heading up the book club. And then someone made a comment uh, that said, well, um, Darius is always in some SHIT, uh, if he can't get along with Auntie Mel, he can't get along with anyone. Well, he didn't like that. And so he decided to up the ante, and then his story then changed to, well, the real reason why I am not dealing with Auntie Mel or Melanie Ford is because I've been seen, I've been, he had been receiving death threats and hate mail, and that he had traced my IP address and determined that I was the individual that was sending him these threats. Roland, that is a lie. I've never done anything like that. I wouldn't do anything like that. But as a result of him putting out that lie, it was, I was swatted. I had hate mail. I had hate emails. People found my profile. Uh, it was absolutely horrible. So much so, one of his followers um, found me by the information that he had uh, put online um, and called my phone number uh, because he gave my name, uh, my full name, my address, and other pertinent information. Um, found me, called me, read to me not only my address, but get this, the address of my parents, and told me they were going to find me and F me up as a result of what I had what he had alleged that I had done to him. Again, this is, this is, this is not true. This is not true. And again, he, he, he has alleged that, that you were, this, this was a tweet that he sent out. Mm -hmm. um, let me just double check here. This was on March 17th. Um, March 17th. And he says, Wu, uh, uh, Wu uh, Melanie's Ford stalking me in the bushes after putting a t-shirt on my car. Yep, call the police. Yep, getting a restraining order. And unlike them, I'll let the judge handle Georgia statute 16-5-9. Let's go. Now, if you see here further, folks, uh, just, I'm going to pull up another tweet here uh, where um, he, he says here, um, he says that he was granted... Uh, let me zoom in for the folks. He said that he was granted a temporary order protection against you. It's, this says, this includes any mention of my name on social media without my consent. If you observe, my DMs are open for screenshots. Uh, and he has the, he puts the, uh, the stalk, the, 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 the protective order. Uh, and, it's, uh, and then it says on here, uh, has a judge's name, it was so ordered on March 23rd. You, you and your attorney say that was, y'all never received that. No, I was never served with that. But I was, became aware of it because he posted it all over so, uh, social media. And because I do not hide, uh, I showed up at court. And so, uh, in, in looking at this here again, um, <clears throat> He said that um, um, in terms of, and, and, and you look at, again, you put your name in, you'll see uh, a number of these um, uh, uh, tweets, folks who support him, people who's, who uh, make other allegations. Uh, but you would think that if he sent a tweet out on March 23rd saying that you were stalking him and he got a TRO and then said this is going to be handled in the courts, uh, why would he not show up? Uh, just so folks know, um, 
I had sent Darius a tweet. So first of all, folks had sent me various tweets saying, hey, you should be covering this. Uh, and one of the things that I, had, I explained to people is that there are a number of people who have made allegations. Some say they were cheated out of products, out of money. Uh, and I actually sent tweets to him and he said, well, if they have, they, they should sue me. And I said, you should come on the show to discuss this. I extended an invitation for him to come on. Um, he didn't respond. He follows me on, 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 on social media. And so you see, I just tweeted this. Uh, hey, Darius, I'm live on Roland Martin Unfiltered. Uh, and I said, uh, she says you didn't show up at yesterday's court appearance. Why you filed the TRO? Why did you fail to appear? Hopefully he actually responds during the show. This has been, this has been an ongoing battle, uh, going back and forth, back and forth. Um, you said it's caused you significant uh, pain, the constant uh, the threats, people, people uh, from him. You could have easily tried to say, you know what, let me just drop this and move on. Sure. Why did you say, no, I got to go even more public because of what's been happening? Unfortunately for me, I, I did do that. Um, I'm in a position uh, that I, this is not me. I am not on social media like that. If you, if you can find my page, which I've grown to great lengths to make sure that certain things aren't found, but if you find my page, uh, which my Instagram is public, you will see nothing but positive affirmations. The few tweets that are, uh, the few things that are there um, are positive, flowers, so on and so forth. My Twitter uh, which I had to literally dust off because I had created it and not used it, has been one where I've told my truth about my experience with Darius. And your, to your question, why have I, I I've done this, um, I had no choice. This man has put me all over three platforms, um, calling me a stalker. Before that, if you Googled my name, you would see philanthropic acts things that are positive, uh, uh, you know, the boards that I sit on, positive things. Now, the first thing you Google, it says that I am a stalker. He took one snippet of a video um, and then labeled me as a stalker and put it on there. So let's talk about why I was there. You mentioned uh, Randy Travis, an investigative uh, report. He had no idea that Randy Travis knew I was there. I've never followed that man. Um, he got online and presents these facts as if I have been following him all around Georgia and has told that lie. So again, when it came time for him to prove those facts, he chose not to come. Had I not come, um, he would have gotten a uh, default judgment for the, 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 the protective order. Uh, the, the, the video that he posted uh, saying that you were tracking him, what was that about? What, 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 was that, what happened? That um, it really was a really, really odd coincidence. So uh, I get a ping from the investigator. There are several people that are after Darius. Um, I have an investigator that I, I work with that has been keeping an eye on things as far as Darius is concerned because he has a long history of evading service or not being held accountable. And he also has a problem with doxing people. So I like to keep my name out of his mouth. I like to be aware of what he's doing. And there is a, 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 a person that does that for uh, me and my family. Because um, Darius has a habit of bringing this up every every now and again, once a quarter, maybe a little bit longer. And he does this for engagement. He, he's very um, proud of the fact. And he, there's video that sits out there where he says, ooh, I tell a good story. Um, and that's part of the challenge. He does this for clicks and engagement. But to your question, um, I was literally right across the street at my car dealership. Um, and I get a ping from the investigator that says, hey, Darius just went online, gave the address, and said that um, Randy and some other people are probably going to go and try and, uh, and, and, and catch up with him. I said, you've got to be kidding me when he gave the address. Uh, I literally was across the street, and I, and I brought that with me. Um, one of the things that Darius likes to do, because he thinks he knows everything, is he said, uh, well, there is no, because he put my car online, including my license plate. He says, well, there is no Bentley dealership across the street. Well, Roland, we have more than one car. So he thinks he knows everything. Um, he tried to debunk it. And so um, I was there waiting on him uh, while, um, not waiting on him, I should not say it that way, but I was there 
when he came out waiting on the, the investigators and Randy texts back and said, hey, I can't come. My photographer is here. Um, and so I did stay. Randy, I have a tweet from Randy. He said, hey, can you get some video for me? Um, it probably was not the best move uh, because that's not what I do. But hey, I was across the street. And I have to be really honest with you. When someone has tormented you for so long um, and ha has evaded service and had has lied and so on and so forth, there was a part of me that wanted to see him finally, finally, this man is going to be exposed. Finally, the law is going to come uh, and catch up with him. So yeah, I wanted to see it. I did. Unfortunately for me, uh, even though there were other people there, uh, Mr. Williams chose to only take a very small snippet of me, then take that video, put it online, and proceed to tell people that I had been following him for years, that I had moved back to Georgia to stalk him, all sorts of horrible things none of which are true. So I, I remain quiet. I've done the best that I could, but this has been horrible. I feel doxxed all over again. I have been, uh, not only when he put me online, he body shamed me, um, which he has a habit of doing. And, and let me just say this, I'm not the only one. He has doxxed Sonny Anderson. He has doxxed his clients. He, his customers, anyone that speaks out against him, he will go online and he will give your name, he will give your personal information, your email address. Uh, again, to the story that Randy Travis in um, Atlanta highlighted, he did a whole segment on it. And Roland, there were so many people that came forward, he had to do another one. And there's still an opportunity for more um, segments to be aired because he continues to harm people this way. Uh, there, there have been stories. Sheldon Grant did a story, uh, go to my computer, uh, where they said Darius Cooks or hashtag Darius Crooks, popular food personality under fire amidst multiple allegations. Uh, that's a hashtag folks have been developing. Sure. Uh, he also uh, posted uh, this tweet uh, here, April 14th, review the list of the people uh, effing with me and their status. The Kitchenista gone, Danielle Holland gone. I think Danielle Holland is a, uh, a woman who accused him of putting her children's photo photos of her and her children on, if I'm correct. You uh, are correct. And then... Uh, and he did do that. She's and, absolutely correct. It was photos that she had posted, but then he reposted those. But, but then he says, I've got a few more to blast and get rid of. This is the smoke everybody wanted. I'll give it to them. They started it. I'll finish it. Hashtag Darius Crooks. Hashtag a forever problem. Mrs. Holland never put her children on Twitter. Once he found out, she was online anonymously. He, he found out who she was went and sought out her page, and I believe it was, this is factual, he went to her Instagram, found pictures of her, her husband, her children, and put them online. Um, he has said things and done things. Uh, there's a video out there where he gleefully says, hey, I have their background checks. I have their social security numbers. Um, one of the problems, and, and I'm glad we're talking about this, is he enlists and incites his fan base. He's not only the problem, there's uh, also many willing participants that choose to believe what this man has said and they go after these people. Roland, this is scary to me. I have screenshots where there are people say, that have said, I work for the police, tell me what you need. This is what they do, all based off, because he has this really uh, charismatic um, persona for those that aren't paying attention. And so once people start to pay attention and they say, wait, something's not right, or they don't receive their product or speak out against him in any way, and these are things that he's done. These are not people that just decided to wake up one morning and say, hey, I, I want to just be after this guy. These are people that he's, in, he's injured, he's mm -hmm. harmed. He's fighting right now when he was supposed to be in court yesterday with another online personality, uh, Andrew Caldwell. That man has posted on his Instagram page where he now has received death threats, where they're calling him a f an F word. Um, this is what happens when he, he calls it, he activates his fan base. And it's, it's like sport for him. He loves it. When he did it to me, um, this is, he wanted to monetize it. He was on live on IG and he said, let's go to Facebook and make some money off this hoe. 
That's how he thinks. This is about clicks, engagement, and likes for him, and he's getting paid for it, and he loves it. I'm gonna bring in Shireen Mitchell. She's the founder of Stop Online Violence Against Women. Uh, she is a, uh, a digital specialist. My legal panel is still here as well, and I got some questions for them too. Uh, but Shireen, first of all, um, uh, explain to people the, the idea of doxing. First of all, is doxing legal? Is it illegal? Uh, can, you know, what, what is out there? Can somebody just put your personal information, your address, your phone number or whatever on social media? And do you have any sort of recourse? So the, the challenge here is that the things that are public information is not doxing if you share it again, because it's already public information. But if it is information that they have for you, like let, let's say he had credit card information because someone purchased something from him and then he used that information to share, that's the part that's illegal. Um, this situation to me explains that there are, there are multiple facets here, but there are also people doing other things like get, giving him that information and then he's using it. Where those where those people are getting that information from is the question, um, and and then that may not be that may be illegal in those instances. And Auntie Mel, I'm sorry when you said you got swatted. I wanted to explain that too. When people get your public information, including your address, swatting means that they can call the police and say there's an active shooter, and have the police show up at your doorstep with guns blazing and potentially get someone killed. Mm -hmm. So it's not even just the death threats themselves, but it's also the fact that they could actually use uh, the police department to actually uh, commit a, a different type of crime, and that's what swatting is. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, the challenge with doxing is that sometimes people give out that information themselves, and so it's then easy just to grab it from your social media accounts, like where you put your address or where you put your phone number, maybe uh, like on Facebook or something like that. That is not doxing if you put that information out. But if they have done things to kind of use your information, like with credit cards, that's something that is illegal. And that the, the problem is, is that whether it's illegal or not in these in these instances, it's unethical across the board. And, and that I, is, I'm sorry, that's the part that's important. And I will say, in my case, and I can only speak for myself, I, I did not have that type of situation. I have always been a very private person on social media. So uh, unless he broke into or hacked, which that wasn't the case, uh, he said um, that he had uh, my information, obviously, from when I purchased a cookbook. Um, so putting my first and last name out there and my phone number and, and he, you all are not obviously because it's, it's a long, it's a spider web. There's so much online at the hashtag Darius Crooks um, where he has just put people's information out there simply to activate um, his, his fan base, if you want to call him that, to harm people. There is no reason for him to put out anyone's social security number. He's had his previous baker, Parm Palma Arthur, who, who came out and said things about <coughs> the way he ran his baking company. He put her pay stub online on, and, and posted it. It had her social security number, what she made, and her address. Why is that okay? It is No, actually, that's, that's, not, that's not legal. That one's he not legal. He did it. He okay, did it. So like, it, like birth certificates, social security cards, those kinds of things, they're not, that's not legal. <coughs> that's something that they would have access to. And if they did get access to it, um, that, that's, that, that, would be, that would be on the illegal side. He so did it. that's what I'm saying. Like, we have to be really careful about which parts are illegal or not. Mm -hmm. So, for example, people who own homes, mm -hmm. um, in many instances, your home is listed as, in a public file because... Mm -hmm you own the home sure. and sometimes it's easy to connect and that is where your address can come from and right. that's public information mm -hmm. but like a pay stub or a tax return or a birth certificate or social security card th those are things that people have the right to like actually have a case against the person because that's illegal and, and you made a good point and i am very well aware um and that's been part of the challenge just because um, some of this isn't illegal somewhere uh, in a lot of places. Some of this teeters on just unethical or cyberbullying. Um, but I think I, I, I think I hate to speak to people, but I think we could all agree that it's just not okay. If sure. if your viewer or your follower doesn't have access to my address, um, 
but for you giving it out, they weren't thinking about my address, but for you giving it out. And one says, hey, it's time for me to enlist you. Um, this, this is what he does. Again, he's done it to Sonny Anderson. He's done it to Angela Davis. He's done it to the Hollands. He's done it to numerous customers of his, and it's just bad behavior. And the other level of this, which makes this very, very disheartening, his fan base is, is largely, I would say 99% <coughs> of the very people that he's attacking. So he's having- um, Meaning black women. I'm about to say it. Other black women attacking other black women. And they ask no questions. I, I responded to someone on yesterday, and generally I don't, but someone tweeted uh, to me, she says, you are an old black bitch. And I found that very interesting. And I said, do, do I even know you? Like, what have I done to you? Why are you so angry at me? These are his followers. They feel like I have, I have by telling my truth of what this man has done to me, <coughs> that I'm doing something wrong. Um, but I've made clear to them, especially the ones that come out and say that I'm in law enforcement, so on and so forth. They are being, every lie that he is on, there are other people monitoring everything that he does and that he says. And so when they want to be big and bad and say things like, hey, I work for law enforcement, tell me what you need, when they want to threaten you with harm and things like that, okay, uh, you might want to rethink your, 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 your motives here. I, I just don't understand a how, and I guess the, the ones of us who are logical don't. Why there are people, and it's a, a bit of a naivete, but I guess it depends on the way your life is going. What you would wake up in the morning, seek out a stranger, and threaten them for no reason. Um, it's, it's pretty ridiculous, and he does it for sport. Um, bring our uh, attorneys in uh, right now, because um, I, I, I posed this question um, uh, on social media, posed it uh, to him and to others who were tweeting me. Uh, that the people accusing him of fraud, um, <clears throat> are they are they suing him? Um, um, you know, have you has any charges filed against things along those lines? You talked about uh, the uh, one hundred and forty five thousand uh, dollar penalty uh, that had to pay. Uh, let me start with you, Robert. You're there uh, in uh, Atlanta, Georgia, uh, and again, there are a number of people who have been tweeting me, commenting, and saying, "Oh, this person has to be stopped," mm -hmm. but. The reality is, talk, being rude to somebody on social media is not illegal. Um, cussing them out is, is, is not illegal. Uh, and so, but as an attorney, I do want to get the thoughts of you, Scott and Monique. If someone says, I'm taking a TRO out against someone, and then this is going to be handled in the courts, and they, they don't show up to the actual court date, what are your thoughts on that? Oh, well, well, a couple of things. One, <clears throat> I actually interviewed Darius uh, Cooks on my radio show probably about six years ago. Um, I've been five or six years ago before the whole, he blew up on social media along with him and uh, Chef Lindsay Colette from Colette Caterings. And um, just as was just articulated, he actually went on Periscope Live during the radio show. It is his own show in the studio during the <laughs> show that he was supposed to be on. So I, I'll post to it. I'll post a clip on Twitter. Actually, end up being hilarious. Um, but, but he's a narcissistic individual, and because of that, he's had many of these run-ins. I think there was a scandal a few years ago where he was doing fake credit repair for people and got sued. Um, his restaurant got closed down. Those sorts of things. I think, I think there were two restaurants that got closed. Down. Yeah, three. Two, two restaurants three. that got three. closed okay. down. Three. So two in Atlanta, one in Chicago. Yeah, so, so he main, he maintains these online scams, uh, preying on the uh, hearts and minds of his uh, his followers. And even just it was just uh, just articulated after our show because we we tend to ridicule people when they uh, act upon our show. He actually went on Periscope Live to talk about me and our producer and some of the other guests after the show. So this has been going on for a long period of time. Now legally, when somebody talks about you online, that's just talk. 
But once they get into this place of making threats, either of violence, threatening to uh, release personal information, well, that's where you can actually file a criminal report against this individual. And, be, and if they do release uh, improper or censored information, personal information that is privileged, um, that absolutely you can report that to the Georgia Bureau of Investigations or to the Federal Bureau of Investigations for them to look into it, particularly if you have multiple individuals who are involved in this. So I think people have to understand that this is not high school. We do not just play the dozens on on uh, Snapchat or on uh, Instagram Live, these are grown people, grown people uh, issues. You cannot be playing around their personal information. So I, I would suggest other individuals who are um, who, who have experienced this uh, to contact the legal represent uh, some legal representation and then find out the process for filing criminal complaints if it continues. Monique, <clears throat> your thoughts, yes. assessment, um, and for, first of all, uh, Melanie's. Um, Y'all got a continuance? Yes. I'll see him on May 17th, if he shows up. So you, you, you didn't want the matter dropped? I did not. I, I want him cross-examined. So one of the things that people need to, you know, this is part of the challenge to, to what your, your guest just said. You have individuals who said, OK, I'm out, you know, $50 for a cookbook. I'm out. He didn't give me this refund, so on and so forth. They choose to walk away. I was the same. Roland, my life is bigger than this in internet stuff. I have real things that I'm doing with my life and, and, and trying to be a good force in this world. I have had the opportunity and been blessed after so long to come back home and I'm making new relationships and so on and so forth. And so now where I, you know, I sit on boards, my husband sits on boards, we, we're trying to do beautiful things, but now when I meet people, generally, when they're curious about you, and you know what I'm trying to say, mm -hmm. what's the first thing they do? Google you. They Google you. Now, the first thing they're going to find about me, again, instead of philanthropic, uh, uh, philanthropic acts and good things, the first hit now is, there she is, the stalker. And now I've got to try and explain that. I was laying in the cut, minding my own business, um, working with a reporter, uh, partnering with a reporter, to help expose this behavior. And unfortunately for me, um, he is very crafty. He took a snippet of a video, just me, D didn't focus on anybody else, just me, and turned that and placed it online and created a narrative that has been so devastating and so harmful that I have no choice. He outed me. <clears throat> I have had no choice, and I'm not the first, and I'm sure I won't be the last. And so when people came after you, I thought that was so unfair uh, because they had no idea of what you were doing and what you were trying to do and what you were prepared to do. Darius took your initial tweet because you went, reached out to him, and when he thought that you weren't going to do anything, see, that's why you don't put all your cards on the table. He responded to you, and then he got online, true to his, his, his persona, and said, ha, Roland Martin says, well, why haven't I been sued? Um, again. Which was just a question. I mean, which was just a question. But now that he feels as if, oh, you, you're going to ask the hard questions, I, I would be surprised if he's, he, he responds to you, just like when Rav, Randy Travis asked him the hard questions, why are you doxing people? Uh, before the cameras went away, he immediately responded, you don't see me doing that. Um, and that's typical him. Um, again, so I don't want to monopolize the time, but what we have is a group of, uh, of a fan base is made up predominantly of women. Um, the same people that he's taking advantage of are the same people that are supporting him. And so you have the ones that will speak up and ones that don't. What I find over and over and over again um, is that when men step to him, Oh, he, he, this, that smoke is not there. He, 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 he's, he's not going to respond. He, he, he just won't. Um, and so it is, a, it is a cowardice. It is a mean-spiritedness. And while I recognize that it's not illegal, this is what he counts on. He counts on uh, charging just under the amount that makes it a felony. He, 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 he does things just to get by. Um, one of the things, um, when you speak to a why isn't he been uh, sued, um, he charges, so he just sold tickets for 2023. He purchased, he sells things a year in advance. So if he doesn't show for the show next year or the dining event, 
Um, good luck with trying to get your refund back from your credit card company because typically, maybe unless it's an American Express or something like that, you have 90 days. Mm -hmm. And what he does is he takes your voice. He does not respond to, just like you said, he's not responding to you. He doesn't respond to the, the emails. And when he feels the heat, what he's done lately is get online and hold these online customer service types of issues. Why should I or anyone else have to go and wait for you to go online and hope that you pick my question to ask you about a product that I didn't receive? Um, Randy's piece came out and my inbox has been flooded. So he's on a cleanup mission now. So he's issuing refunds. I had someone send me screenshots where he's done a refund from her for her that he owed her from three years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Three years ago. Uh, Monique, the question for you, uh, and again, I, I, I did have folks tweet me mad, upset. Why don't you look into this? And I had to walk people through that. that first of all, when a series of people are making allegations, you have to literally uh, vet investigate and vet each one of the claims. And if you, frankly, if you're one person, you can't do all of that. Mm -hmm. uh, and even tried to hire someone uh, to do the reporting uh, was unsuccessful in doing so. Mm -hmm. uh, what made this different is the fact that there was a court hearing. Mm -hmm. And so by having a court hearing, and it's again, so the basis of, okay, and matter of fact, we could have done the story three weeks ago. And I said, mm -hmm. what we're gonna do is, let's wait for the court hearing. Let's see what happens in the court hearing. Now you have an official record, you don't have, allegations, comment in IG, tweets, you actually have a court hearing. Well, in this case, uh, he didn't show up. So we still went ahead with the story. But there are people out there who are saying, okay, these things happened to me, I got no recourse, okay? From a legal standpoint, what can they do? What should they do? You heard what Robert said, your thoughts. Right, <clears throat> I had less to say than Robert. Um, I, I understand that and I'm very sorry for what your guest has has been going through. Um, I don't have another side or another set of facts to compare that to. So all I can say is if there is a civil issue, whether it's harassment or whether it's filing a false report, which if the, the report for, that caused the TRO was false, then that is a criminal offense um, or something like that, then it can be handled in the courts. I, I actually, though, had a question um, for your guests, for Ms. Ford, because I just wondered why the case was continued yesterday. If he's the one who filed for the TRO, did he call with a reason that he didn't show up? Because I don't know why a judge would ever give someone another chance on a TRO that they're responsible for pressing and prosecuting if they miss the court date. They obviously don't take it seriously. Well, I have to be careful about how much I divulge, but I will say that at the very end, he did not show up. Uh, my attorney was able to show where he was online cooking instead. They did reach out to him and um, he had to appear via Zoom. And um, he said that he, he initially told them um, that he wanted to drop the matter. Um, and then the judge was quite upset that he was not there. Um, he asked him why he was not there, and Mr. Williams then proceeded to blame the court for mixing things up. That did not sit well with the judge. Um, so the judge did say, well, you know, well, are you going to show up? Is this something that you want to pursue? Um, and he said, well, yeah, kind of. Uh, and I said, I'd like to pursue it because it is important to me to get this man on the stand uh, because there are other items at play and, and I have to be careful about what I say. Getting him okay, on I the understand, stand, but yeah. I didn't I didn't know before this question that they actually had reached him during the course of being in court and the hearing happening. So the <coughs> continuance makes more sense in that light because okay. that's not the same thing as a blanket no-show where you're the only one there, he's not reachable, sure. and the judge just extends it. So if he asked for another date and was granted one, um, then to, to that extent, that makes sense. And I certainly can understand you wanting to get your record cleared. Was was the basis of the TRO request just on the you, him being videotaped or... Um, being surveilled by you and by the reporter you were working with? Correct. He, uh, but I had, my attorney um, had seen, or I had heard from what he posted online, um, he, 
the facts in which he used to even secure the TPO are not factual, and I will say that. Okay, but you are the person who's on the video. I am. I absolutely am the person that is on the video. Absolutely. And so I think that that, you know, it's um, it, it is legal for we see people all the time who are taking videos of police when they're doing things because we are concerned whether they're doing it rightfully or wrongfully. Mm -hmm. And they're public servants. And that is lawful. Um, but you can run into trouble doing things yourself, like surveilling another person, being on private property, being on public property, but using a scope lens. All of those are things that I just would suggest private investigator, mm -hmm. reporters doing their jobs, anything except for uh, one of of the actual parties because that's how the system, he was able to use the system in order to put you in court and he can't be accused of, of lying about it because the video is there um, and, and you, you say that you all were intentionally um, trying to track him and get pictures and get information on him. So well, I, that well, part I, is, is difficult. If I could interject, um, I did not say we were intentionally. I said they were. I was across the street, which I have provided proof for. It really was a coincidence. And I've proven that. And I will prove it again. I happen to be across the street. Strange coincidence. Um, and then when I was notified, so were others. And so um, I did make the decision, which I later regretted, to go. Um, and, and I had a human moment. I had a human moment of wanting to see the person who has terrorized me in one way or another um, for since 2016, you know, continuing to bring up mm -hmm. my name and so on and so forth. And so I wanted to see it. But I didn't bring him there. Um, um, and I didn't follow him there. And so that's something that he's asserted and continued to assert. Um, if my understanding, and, and you're an attorney, but my limited understanding of, of when you take out something like a TPO, you have to prove a continued pattern. Uh, I haven't seen that man since 2617. I've not reached out to that man. So for him to go to the courts and lie and say that I have been stalking him it just isn't true, and it didn't happen. He's had my name in his mouth over the years for engagement and likes. And what is a problem for him, I'm not the only one. He does this to a lot of people. Again, Sonny Anderson, the Hollands, uh, Palma Author. There's a list of names that I could go down. This is his his, it, this is his motive, and this is his, his modus operandi. This is how he operates. Um, and it's unfortunate uh, because they're real lives. And, and to the other point, there, are, there aren't laws uh, yet that says that he, could, he can't do this. If I wanted to leave this studio and go online and say while I was in the studio, Roland Martin hit me upside the head, I could do it. Now, Roland is going to have to then take me to court and prove that that didn't happen and hopefully get lucky enough to take this offline. Uh, my attorney, uh, my other attorney, Lisa Moore, is the same attorney who uh, got Cardi B her injunction uh, to get these things removed. Um, they're working on that, but the, the, uh, the suit Lisa against Moore. K? Yes. Got it. Okay. Same attorney. Um, she doesn't take everyone, but she looked at the facts and she's trying to assist with this matter. Um, this is wrong. And there are, there are real human beings on the other side of these lies and these tweets. I'm trying to live my best life, but to be in that situation where someone wants to take you and splash you all over the internet, and that's one thing, you know, we, we, we're grown. You know, somebody wants to call you fat, you go, okay. But it's something entirely different when someone wants to paint you as a crazy, deranged stalker uh, and take a snippet of a video, with, didn't show anybody else, and then paint you as such. I'm out here trying to tell the truth. I will tell the truth and defend myself because I'm not the only one he's done this to. Most people cower. Most people say, you know what, just whatever. Hopefully it'll die down. This isn't right. This is not right. Scott Bolden. Yeah. Uh a lot to unpack here legally, but I'll, I'll try to be as brief as possible. So uh, the ex parte hearing 
everyone can go by themselves to court in most jurisdictions and take out a TRO or TPO, and they'll be granted it on its face. Now, this hearing that your guest was at where there was a no-show, at least initially, uh, usually the case is dismissed by the court because the, it, uh, the plaintiff didn't uh, show up in court, as Monique said, but here they got him on the line. I'll be honest with you, if the judge was unhappy with his uh, him not being there, like most judges will be, then and the defendant, your guest, did not uh, want to dismiss it no. uh, because she wants her day in court. Mm -hmm. She can either file her own TPO for Bingo. TPO if she's got enough. They probably, her and her lawyer probably considered that. Or she could file a civil lawsuit for injunctive relief as well as monetary relief if she's really suffered the damages that she has described so eloquently here. And I'm sure her and her lawyer are contemplating that. That's the expensive side. The less expensive side, and you can do all of this together, is with law enforcement or the government, if you will. Just not the Federal Cybersecurity Act, whereby these are federal offenses if you get enough facts that you can share with the FBI and you can get them interested. Mm -hmm. uh, but the local police have their cybersecurity folks. It's hard to get local police interested because this takes resources and a detective to really investigate. But there's another state government agency in Georgia that I'm, I'm familiar with is the attorney general's office that has a consumer protection act that they enforce. Right. So if you get the attorney general or for Georgia or the state trade commission or the equivalent of the federal trade commission or even the federal trade commission, you write a letter to them, register your complaint. Those federal agencies and state agencies are required to investigate your complaint, and they will. It's less expensive than filing a lawsuit, but you can do these on parallel tracks so that then you have like a dragnet of civil and government interests and eyes on these bad acts and bad actors, right? And at some point in time, his world gets really, really small, right? Because there'll be a lot of enforcement, regulatory enforcement eyes on it, and there'll be a civil lawsuit. And so... Uh, seems like you've looked at all of those options, I presume, because you've got great counsel. Uh, I know at least one of your lawyers. And so uh, good luck with it. But being able to stop these bad acts is a noble effort, but it can be expensive. And the wheels of justice for your relief can move slowly. Okay. But if you're committed to it and targeted, uh, you can get it done along with other people, including possible class action, right? Possible class action for those who have been done, have been the victims of this bad actor. So lots of options for you, some expensive, some not. But if you do all of them parallel, his world gets, gets a lot smaller. Uh, I want to, uh, Shireen, if you could, uh, again, there, there are people out there, people who say these things have happened to him. You know, what is your advice for people when it comes to uh, having their information put out uh, on social media? Um, we hear about these cleaning processes, things along those lines. Uh, sh just, just share your thoughts on that. Yeah, there, there are a couple of services out there. It's, it's a cost, right, for Delete Me and others that are out there. Um, but I did, I did want to, before we move on, I yeah, just wanted to say really quickly for her uh, to understand that the targeting of women, especially black women, which is what our organization focuses on, mm -hmm. is is uh, is on purpose because mm -hmm. that's the group that's least protected. And as mm -hmm. what was said earlier, to, to protect themselves is very expensive. I do appreciate the class action aspect, aspect of this because I think there's an opportunity that those women can come together and support each other and do this yep. in that way for those who ha that have the resources. I, I want to name that because I think there are multiple opportunities where that could have happened before with others that they would not be using this as a tactic that he's not the only one that's done this. There are plenty of other uh, social media influencers to do this kind of thing, especially when they're trying to discredit the people who are, who are basically calling them out. Mm -hmm. So I just want to name that. And then I also want to name the fact that he, he gets away with it because his his base includes other women. So he can say, well, I have women who love me. These are just women that don't like me. Mm -hmm. And that makes it really easy. So when she made the comment, uh, your guest, um, Auntie Mel, I'm going to call you that, Auntie That's Mel. Um, uh, when, when she made the comment that he does not respond the same way to, to, to men. He never does. That's. 
that's a tell. That's a that's a really important tell about a pattern of behavior that can also be documented and used. So I, I wanted to name that in this particular case because I think that there are some other options here, especially if if anyone else is watching this and they they are also victims, that they can basically even kind of keep themselves anonymous because sometimes people want to be anonymous but still be able to support these cases and maybe come up with a class action suit where your name doesn't necessarily get added um, in, in, yep. in public. Yep. Um, so yep. I like I need that to be said and, and like, to not move past that because there are things people can do is what he's doing. Right. Nope. Is what he's doing ethical? Absolutely. But there's lines there where he's, he's coming up across actual legal actions that others can take. So I needed to name that. Um, the other piece, um, is that when it comes to these types of services to clean yourself off of the internet, um, she said something really important that, that is also key is, is SEO, right? You're going to have to clean off the clean up the SEO of the bad content about you in order to get the good content to come back up, mm -hmm. and that that takes work, that takes energy, that takes sometimes PR firms, um, and not everyone has the money to do that. And but that is what that yeah that's one example. Um, delete me is another that can help with those types of things because once you're already doxxed, it's it's now working backwards to kind of clean it all up, and that's. That takes work and time and energy that some people are not willing to, to process. But to prevent it, right, to do your best to keep that information out there from being out there is, like, make sure you're cleaning up any third-party data broker mm -hmm. uh, websites like um, Spokio and others. They're they're out there. They What they do is they just collect information. You get to remove yourselves from those databases. Much of the ones that I can tell by the way that people say, well, I found your information this way or that way, they probably went to those data brokers. Some of them, some people pay for pay for those services so they can be able to get those that extra information that can connect you to your parents or, or whoever else is a family member based on last names sure. or presumed family members, because last names don't mean you're actually a family member. But if you can, if you can go through, because it's free to do this, you can go to those data broker services and tell them to remove you from their database. That's one of the easiest things to keep yourselves from being doxxed. The others include what you choose to do with what you put out about social media. If you put it out publicly, yeah. there's nothing anyone can do. So you, you just make sure that like at the end of the day, like make sure that you're not giving anyone access to, to harm you. That includes taking you know, be careful about the pictures you take about. I, I heard about the other lady. I think Holland was her name. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's a really complicated space to be in. You're just putting pictures up about you and your family and social media. And ultimately for them, like that gives them another opportunity. So the fact that he actually said out loud, here's their children's information. Mm -hmm. That's also a pattern of behavior. Yes. And I think there's another angle there that other, the other women, if they're, if they're being, if their children are being threatened, can use in, in the, in the case. Um, but even what you, what you, you have to do, because we've gotten so used to putting so much of our personal information yeah. out there as an individual, you need to really start honing in, putting out too much information that easily could just be searched by your name or go to any of your profiles. And then if you ever, I don't know, some people do this, they get web domains and they host it or they, or they grab domains and in there they just like, add because this is public information as well, um, they just add their address because they just want to, you know, have their domain with their name on it. I tell people all the time, Put a P.O. box, put a, a business address. Mm -hmm. Don't put your personal information because you're, again, in that moment, giving that away. Yeah. And I think sometimes people don't realize you're just grabbing a domain. You may think about it later. You may use it at some point. You may never use it at all. Or you have an existing website. But if that has an actual real address where you live, that's another way that people can get it. And they don't have to go through any other services. That is also public information. And then the last, last thing, as, as always... We have a resource list, so um, if you ever want to see a resource of things that, that you can use, go to our website, which is stopalongvower.com slash resources, that you can actually go look through other ways that you can help yourself sort of keep protect yourself from the things that you should, uh, that, that will get you doxxed. Melanie's final comment. And, you know, uh, uh, Robert, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. Robert, go ahead. Well, I, I, uh, just real quick, I wanted to respond to some of the people commenting on uh, online to this. Uh, do not get goons. I've seen that comment over and over again. Handle this the, the legal way, through the court system, through law enforcement. I, I would not recommend you say, finding You're saying no street justice. 
<laughs> yeah, do do not do not get gooned yeah. by by all means. But I would, however, recommend that you do. Uh, Georgia is now an open carry state, well, permitless. So I would recommend just because when you have this many crazy people on the internet mm -hmm. who now have your personal information, know what you look like, who uh, you never know what deranged person there is out there. So join the Bass Reeves Gun Club, uh, NAGA. They have classes every Saturday and Sunday for women. Uh, go right down to Stoddard Gun Range. Kim Kimbrough will treat you nicely if you need to get trained. Uh, that part. I do recommend you do because I think everybody needs to make sure they can defend themselves. Y'all knew Rob. Y'all knew Rob. You knew Rob was going to go get a 10 millimeter. You knew Rob was going to work guns. You knew he was going to do that. Why don't you just tell her to spot him on sight? Well, it ain't going to turn around and walk away. Scott, it ain't no difference than you showing your ass as a Kappa. Same thing. Something's going to happen every Wednesday. Melanie's final comment. I just want to thank everybody for the information and for the resources. I think that this is a long-standing problem with this gentleman, um, and it's multi-layered. It, it is his behavior on top of trolling behavior, on top of uh, how do people feel about themselves that would allow them to want to participate in this type of behavior. And so uh, I'm going to continue to do the good work, and uh, I appreciate you having me here. All right. I appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Uh, and again, uh, Darius uh, Cooks Williams, uh, you are more than welcome to come on this show to explain yourself, to answer uh, these uh, allegations. We'd love to ask you about not showing up in court yesterday uh, and especially look forward to uh, May 17th uh, when that next uh, hearing is taking place. And so, posted. Shireen, we thank you uh, as well for joining us. All right, folks, back to our Roland Mark Unfiltered video in just one moment. Folks, Black Star Network is here. I'm real um, revolutionary right now. Like, Support this man, Black Media. He makes sure that our stories are told. Uh, thank you for being the voice of Black America, Roland. I love y'all. All momentum we have now, we have to keep this going. The video looks phenomenal. See, there's a difference between Black Star Network and Black-owned media and something like CNN. You can't be Black-owned media and be scared. It's time to be smart. Bring your eyeballs home. You dig?